We welcome you to uh, join us um, as we remember those who fought, many giving their lives during the First and the Second World Wars. And um, we've brought along this little gospel according to St. John that was uh, produced by Scripture Gift Mission a hundred years ago and given to the um, active servicemen at that time. And uh, this gospel was especially designed to fit into the front pocket of the uniform. I'll read to you the message inside the cover here from Lord Roberts. This is what he said on the 25th of August 1914. I ask you to put your trust in God. He will watch over you and strengthen you. You will find in this little book guidance when you are in health, comfort when you are in sickness, and strength when you are in adversity. In the back of this gospel, there are hymns, um, several hymns, and uh, we invite you now to join us as Freddie sings one of them, O oh God our help in ages past. God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. Beneath the shadow of thy throne, thy saints have dwelt secure. Sufficient is thine arm alone, and our defense is sure. Before the world in order stood, all earth received her frame. From everlasting thou art God, to endless years the same. Time like an ever-rolling stream bears all its sons away. They fly forgotten as a dream dies at the opening day. A thousand ages in thy sight are like an evening gone, short as the watch that tends the night before the rising sun. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Be Thou our God, whilst troubles last, and our eternal These familiar words are spoken at memorial services throughout Britain on Remembrance Day, November the 11th, remembering the lost servicemen and women who gave their lives. They will not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them or the years decay at the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them in John's Gospel we read the words of the Lord Jesus Christ in chapter 15 verses 12 to 13 
which I will read to you. Familiar words, these. Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. In this Gospel we read the words of the Lord Jesus and we remember with gratitude all the people who gave their lives in both world wars and to bring about peace for our nation. We also remember the greatest sacrifice ever made and the greatest battle ever fought against evil at the cross. That's why we're standing outside this lovely church today which was uh, preached in by William Tyndale who translated the scriptures in the 1500s so that the ploughboy and the man in the street could read the Bible in his own language. Greatest battle ever fought against evil at the cross 2,000 years ago was by God's only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for the sins of the whole world, bringing reconciliation with Almighty God, our Heavenly Father. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The nation of Britain has in the main turned its back on the God of the Holy Bible, whose laws once governed and guided our nation aright. Many laws have been put on the statute books which are totally contrary to God's law, bringing the nation to the brink of collapse. It is time, my friends, to turn back to the God of the Bible as a nation in repentance before it is too late. Now is the appointed time, now is the day of salvation. In the last world war, King George VI called for days of prayer for the whole nation of Britain and God did many mighty miracles like Dunkirk and God will answer prayer today if we truly cry out to him. These familiar words from the book of 2 Chronicles in the Old Testament chapter 7 verse 14 say and this is God speaking, Almighty God if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven forgive their sin and heal their land. May we turn to him at this testing time for our nation. God bless you, each one. It's a long way to Tipperary it's a long way to go. It's a long way to Tipperary, to the 
And I've been at sea now for nearly five years without without coming home at all. Without I've, a break. Without a break, yes. Oh, I, I've been all no at sea. No breakdown. No, none at all. But mm. I, I'm so glad to be back in this land of England. Well, it's good to yeah. have you back with us. It is, I know. But yes, um, we know you won the victory. Well, uh, I was on there with Nelson the originally, yes, but uh, obviously I, you know, I've aged a bit. And he must have thrown you off, I think. They, d they did certainly he? did, but yes. uh, there you are, you can have everything. I, we are about to leave Nelson behind, but uh, I'm the only one left now in the British Navy that's uh, really well, up to standard. That's you're the only one left, so we're going to sing for you. Oh, that's and very nice you. of you. Yes. Okay, right. And <coughs> I'm sure they are uh, glad to be back with your missus. Well, I yes. am. <coughs> Is she still around? Unfortunately, yes. Nice girls love the sailor. All the nice girls love the tall. Oh, there's something about the sailor. Well, you know what sailors are. Bright and easy, bright and easy. It's the latest pride and joy. Oh, the love the captain very Ship ahoy, ship time uh, songs that the soldiers sang during the war reminded me of a testimony I read in this 
St. John's Gospel that was given to the servicemen at the time. Uh, this testimony from the Scripture Gift Mission archives reads, a soldier was sent a small Bible book at the front. With time on his hands, he read it and reread it. Despite never showing an interest in spiritual things before, the words sunk in and he became a changed man. There were hymns at the back of the book and as he sang them to himself, he became known up and down the trench as Singing Jim. During a reconnaissance mission, a young soldier from his company was wounded between the trenches. A volunteer was asked for to bring him in and Singing Jim stepped forward. He reached the man under cover of darkness and began crawling home with his friend on his back. Then a flare burst overhead, revealing their position. A single sniper shot rang out, and Singing Jim was killed outright. In his pocket was a long letter to his wife about how he had come to Christ, encouraging her to do the same. The wounded man offered to take it home to England and deliver it in person, telling her how her husband had laid down his life for him. He was given the letter and did indeed deliver it, but his company had one further request. While he was in England, could he pick up some copies of the book Singing Jim had been reading? Well, that's wonderful, isn't it, to see somebody lay down his life for his friend. But of course, we're here to, to remember not just those, but the Lord Jesus Christ, the altogether lovely one, the perfect one, who laid down his life for each one of us. And uh, we do pray a special blessing on each of you as you watch this short video. Bless you. Goodbye, darling.